Hey, Kelly here from Carcraft Auto Tech, and today I'm gonna to take you through doing the brakes on your Toyota Tacoma. So All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and assume that most of us are gonna be doing this at home and not in a repair shop like I am here today. So first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna, obviously the vehicle is gonna be in our driveway or whatever, in park. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is before we lift up the wheels, we're going to wanna to take a breaker bar and of course, unloosen the wheel bolts off uh, before we jack it up. Uh, if we don't do that, then obviously once the wheel's off the ground, uh, you try to undo it and then the wheel is going to want to spin around on you. So uh, you're going to want to go ahead and start there. Uh, next, uh, you're going to assume that we're going to be jacking the car up and not using a hoist like I am. Uh, now the Tacoma is quite nice here obviously because you know being a truck it does have a frame. So as we can see, uh, you know we've got a whole full frame under there. We want to go ahead and uh, use the jack underneath there. And of course the frame goes all the way along the back. Uh, but of course we'll be jacking it up in the front. Then, uh, before you do that, uh, of course, we're going to want to go ahead and uh, we're going to want to put a block here behind the wheels. So that way, an extra precaution there. You don't have to worry about the uh, vehicle wanting to roll back. Of course, set your parking brake as well. And uh, once you get that all set up, then you can go ahead and uh, get your front wheels removed. All right, so I already went ahead and loosened off all the nuts there with the breaker bar. Uh, I got the vehicle lifted up here. I'm just going to go ahead and spin all the nuts off here with my electric impact. Okay, so we got the truck lifted up here and we got the wheel off. So the one thing that we are going to pay attention to, obviously uh, you would figure this out uh, when you're looking into parts or whatever it is. Obviously this is for the six bolt wheel hub option. Uh, the five bolt would be slightly different uh, brake design there. Uh, so this one will be, everything will be obviously for this, this design here. So, uh, so what you're going to want to pay very close attention to here is how these springs are located in here as you can see this one and that one there so uh, as you're removing them make sure you pay close attention to the way that they were placed in there that way we can stick them back exactly as the way they came out okay so what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to grab myself a pair of little needle nose and we're just going to go ahead and pull that out of there and same thing on this end here we can go ahead and just pull that out and then we can just turn that out of there and that's exactly what that guy looks there and make sure we remember the orientation of that so it can go back in there exactly as it came out like I was saying previously. Then we can go ahead here and we can just pop these springs out. They are just in these holes right here so um, my little screwdriver might be better here but uh, we can go ahead and pop that one out and pop that one out there because you can see and that'll just stay loose in there until we knock out the hold down pin. So as these things age, they are usually seized and I've seen them bad enough very many of times where we end up by having to replace the, the caliper completely. Um, you just can't get them out. My truck's not that old, so it's a 2015, so uh, these should still be relatively, hopefully just free. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and give them a little tap back there and yeah, it looks like they're gonna come out just fine. So. And then we're gonna need a bit of a punch here, just something with a little bit of length. And we'll just tap those through like so. And just like that. And uh, there we go, just a little bit more. And we can try pulling them. They are actually now pretty firm as well. So um, what we can do here is just kind of hit them on a little bit of an angle, but you should still be able to tap them free. That one came free. We'll just pull that out and we'll remove this spring here. Remembering the orientation, like I was saying, and hopefully here we can get this one out, come out nice and free here. Well, it would be nice if I had a bit of a longer punch. But, oh, there we go. And now, like I was saying, quite often these are seized. So what we can do before we go ahead and remove this here is what we can do is we can definitely spray some penetrating fluid in and around here. Obviously that's not very good for the brakes, uh, but we're going to go ahead and be cleaning it and replacing everything anyway. So you got to do what you got to do. Spray it in there, wire brush it if you need to. 
you know, pound it back and forth, trying to get that thing moving, you know, work it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Hopefully you can get that uh, free. You know, sometimes these do get a little bit damaged or whatever it is, if you're not, you can always file them off just a little bit or, you know, get them cleaned up nicely. Uh, and, you know, if it's not reasonable, unfortunately, uh, you'll have to buy new pins, but uh, yeah, there we go. So that's removing that. All right, so what we're gonna do next here is before we go ahead and undo the caliper, uh, what we're gonna wanna do is, obviously this is a four piston caliper, so uh, we wanna go ahead and uh, we wanna ex push back the calipers in position. Now for this style, the easiest way to do this here is to basically get yourself two pry bars. So what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and there's a little bit of a lip here. We're gonna go ahead and just slowly create a little bit of space back here. And then once we get a little bit of space, we can go ahead and work this pad back and basically pushing the calipers and back into their retracted position so we can assemble uh, the new brakes in there. So once I sort of got one, I can feel that's pretty firm. Sort of check the top, check the bottom. I can feel that looks like it's basically all retracted. Then um, I can get this front one started here a little bit. Now what'll happen if you try to do just one at a time, the other ones will push back. So what I'm trying to do here, just get a little bit of space just so I can get this one in. Once I've done that, then I will get my second pry bar and we'll go ahead and get them both going at, at the exact same time. That way we can uh, push them both back. So uh, we'll get that one in there and I'll get this one in here. Um, if you don't have pry bars, you can use a little screwdriver as well. I'm well, not wish it shouldn't say little. You can use yourself a reasonably sized screwdriver and just push those back. So I'm kind of pushing in an opposite direction here, making sure, and I'm kind of giving it a pretty pretty firm. You'll know that they're back because they're just not moving anymore. Plus you can see that they've pushed all the way back in. So I can kind of know that both of those are firmly back. Once they are, we can go ahead and slip the brake pads out. These aren't completely worn out yet, but my rotors are warped, so that's why we're doing this today. So uh, we'll go ahead and slip this brake pad out. And if you want, you can remember the orientation of those as well, so you know exactly how they came out. All right, next, before we go ahead and pull this caliper off, what we're going to want to do is we're definitely going to want to, uh, we're going to want to clean inside here. So um, the pistons here, they show this, here's the, the, the basically here's the pistons. So, and we have the boots. Uh, you know, we're gonna wanna you know, check to make sure that these boots don't have any ripping or tearing. Um, they've pushed back in, we don't see any leaking. Um, you know, I wouldn't suspect anything you know, at my age, but you know, obviously if your vehicle's considerably older, you're gonna definitely wanna check to make sure that, uh, you know, that the pistons retracted nicely when we push the pads back and that there's you know, no ripping, tearing or anything like that. So if that's the case, uh, everything looks good. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna wanna wire brush in each of these areas because this is where the pads obviously contact the uh, the caliper and we want to make sure that's all nice and clean so what you're going to want to do go ahead and get yourself a small wire brush this one's maybe a little big but it's still quite nice we'll get in there clean that really good here we'll clean there really well clean basically uh, each of the contact points really well and then we'll go ahead and we will get our uh, can of brake clean you know i got bottles but we'll go ahead and we'll give that a wash out uh, and of course, you know, put yourself a drip pan on the floor. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, so I went ahead and got this all cleaned here, wire brushed out and have it all break clean and cleaned off nicely. The one thing I might add too as well, though, if you are going to be wire brushing it, it is probably best idea that you do also wear a dust mask. Of course, we don't wanna get uh, any, uh, you know, breathe in any of the dust and whatnot. You know, uh, you know they don't have asbestos like they used to, but I'm sure it's still, uh, you know, not, not, not good to do, so. Um, now before, just before we go ahead and pull this caliper off, uh, what we're gonna wanna notice here is that this has a s fixed steel brake line just right in here. So if we don't uh, remove this clip, we would actually have to bend this line away uh, to get the, the caliper and to get the rotor off essentially. So we don't wanna, we don't wanna do that. Um, so basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna wanna go ahead and remove this brake clip here. Um, I've always found these actually best to grab these with uh, side cutters, believe it or not, instead of regular pliers. So there's a little lip there, and you just go ahead and grab it, and then I can usually just work it off backwards. And then, yeah, there you go. There is exactly, uh, see what that guy looks like there. It's got the little, little, little bend in it. And uh, yeah, you can just kind of hook it and grab it off. So 
Um, once you've done that, then now you can see that we would be, we'll be able to push this back freely here. Um, so we'll go ahead. Uh, there's two bolts back here. I'll take a quick shot of those. Uh, you're going to want to head grab your breaker bar and crack those le loose, and then we can push that away and we'll strap up the caliper so it's not hanging off our rubber brake lines. Okay, so we're ready to take the caliper off. Now, the one thing I did want to note, so these are the two mounting bolts here. Uh, when we're removing it, we got to must make sure that we do not remove uh, either of these bolts here. Uh, basically, the caliper is made of two pieces and it's squeezed together. Uh, so if we undo these, it would actually, you know, take the caliper apart and we would be leaking some fluid there. And uh, yeah, it's not ideal. So don't take these, just these two here. So let's go ahead and grab a bar. We can loosen those now or uh, socket in a gun, whatever is easiest for you. All right, so I went and got those bolts all the way undone here. So let's go ahead and pull these out and you'll see the caliper will be free. It's actually undone, still not even going anywhere because it's still sort of sitting in here. So uh, what we're gonna wanna do is just kind of pull it back and then you can see we're still stuck in this loop here. Um, we could go ahead and undo all this, but we don't need to do that. So let's just make sure it's free, not pulling on here too much. And we're gonna go ahead and just bungee cord it out of the way. So let's go ahead and see if we can find that uh, a good spot for this thing to get hooked up here. So uh, let's go ahead and hook that up there and uh, run this bungee up here somewhere. And yeah, that it's still sort of in the way, but this will do the trick uh, enough that I can work on it. Um, nice, there we go, that, that's much better. So it's up out of the way, uh, should be pretty good. And now if you want, you could actually get in here a little bit better and give it a bit more of a cleaning job, but uh, I think we got it pretty good enough there. I'll uh, give it a check over here in a moment. All right, next what we're gonna wanna do here is we're gonna wanna obviously remove the brake rotor. So um, what a lot of people don't realize is that generally most of the rotors have these holes in here. And what those can be used for is for putting a bolt in here and threading this in and pressing off against the hub to extract the rotor without having to beat it, basically beat it off. So um, typically, um, you know, if these don't work for you or if you don't have a, a bolt or anything like that, you can hit it. Now, if you're hitting it on the surface and you're reusing this rotor, you are going to dent it. Um, it is not ideal, um, you know, you definitely don't want, would rather not want to do that. If you can hit it on the hub surface, you can do that and basically try to bounce it off. I, you know, I do that lots of times, but be very careful not to nick or hit your studs because then you're getting into a whole nother problem. Um, mostly I would try to hit it off from behind, you know, and we also hit it, try and hit it very, very flat on the end of the, of the uh, hammer. That way it's not making any dents or anything like that. You could also use, put a piece of wood back there and beat on the piece of wood, but, uh, Today I'm gonna, I'm gonna show how we do these, these bolts here. So uh, this truck here that I'm, you know, being uh, import, I'm gonna assume this is a eight by 1.25 thread pitch. So that's the bolt I went ahead and got. Um, you know, you can screw it in there and just see if it goes in by hand. Sometimes they're very rusty and they just, they don't go in. That one seems to be threading in there fine. So work it in and out, maybe just clean it up a little bit. Same thing with this one, clean it out a few times. And if you wanted to, you could also go ahead and put a little bit of penetrating fluid in there as well. Um, you know, depending on how bad it is. Sometimes these get very stuck. You could always put some along there as well. Um, don't be surprised on, you know, a little bit older one or if you're in a rust belt area, that if this is really stuck on there, um, sometimes these rotors, they do bond quite hard on there. Um, I don't think that's gonna be the case for me, but so we're gonna go ahead and uh, thread this in here can use my impact driver and just fire that in there and you can watch and kind of see what's going to happen here. There, so I didn't even have to go to the other side. Sometimes what you'll have to do when they're really stuck is, you know, go to the other one, go to the other one, go back and forth, back and forth, and basically shimmy the rotor off. Um, mine came off relatively easy, so let's go ahead and just pull that off there. And then you can basically see all the, even in my area, you know, we got a lot of corrosion and then it kind of gets corroded and rusted on there, but uh, still relatively good shape. All right, so yet again, so basically now we're gonna wanna prep this surface uh, for our new brake rotor. Obviously we want that to be very uh, clean 
and uh, no you know debris or bumps or anything you know obviously we know it should be relatively flat because that one's been on there since brand new but we do want to make sure now that we haven't disturbed any rust bits or anything like that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get a wire brush and I'm going to work in behind all these areas and just kind of keep working it until we know until I'm pretty satisfied that it's nice and clean we can go ahead and give it a quick wash up again um, I mean if you want you can clean your backing plate and all that it has no, uh, you know, there's no performance gain or anything that's gonna give you any concern. But hey, if you're here and you feel like you wanna clean it up, go right ahead. I'm not gonna do that today, but you most definitely could if you'd like. Well, and there you have it. Basically all wire brushed, washed off and cleaned up. Nice clean area here for the uh, rotor to go on. So we'll go ahead and uh, let's have a look at the parts. So let's take a quick look at the parts that we're installing. So today we're gonna be using the uh, Napa Napa Brakes Ultra Premium line. Um, when it comes to rotors, um, I mean, there's a lot of a lot of cheap stuff out there. So, I mean, you know, you know, put what you can afford. But I mean, <clears throat> you sort of do get what you pay for. So, um, I mean, you know, you buy some cheap, you know, rotors online, eighteen dollars a piece, sort of thing. Uh, I mean, you get what you pay for. I mean, I would expect that you know, eventually they're going to warp or, you know, whatever it is. So uh, these ones say they're they're certified uh, high carbon. You got this neat little stamping on there. And the one thing I do like too is they have the coating uh, on here as well. So no cleaning, uh, you know, any, any of the uh, packing grease off of it and smoke coming off the rotors when you're setting them in and all that kind of stuff that's taken care of. Uh, we're gonna be using the uh, Adaptive One uh, brake pads from Napa as well. Um, I think they're, they're, pretty, they're pretty neat. They come with a, a different formulation on the uh, in, uh, inner and outer pads. Um, of course they come with the new uh, springs and then there you can see they marked and color coded the inner and the outer pads so um, yeah we're gonna put those in today okay so we're all apart uh, cleaned up and ready to go back together so uh, as you can see I placed the rotor on and uh, I just <clears throat> threaded on one of the nuts just to hold the rotor in place there so it's not flopping around uh, obviously we'll slide the caliber back on just how we took it off and then uh, Next, obviously we're gonna be putting the hold down bolts on, which uh, brings me to an area of debate. So um, obviously this is our, our hold down bolts here that we had. Um, of course, we're gonna to wanna to make sure we go ahead and, um, and you know, wire, wire, brush, wire brush those is, you know, nice and clean. Um, I'm going to be putting these back in without thread locker. <clears throat> A lot of people will use uh, thread lock on the two retaining bolts. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, some manufacturers use it. Um, as you can see, these ones that came off the Toyota here, these, uh, they definitely do not have any thread locker. Um, you know, I mean, over the years, I've known uh, many, 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 many technicians uh, that are not putting it on there. And, um, you, know, I've, you know, I've done hundreds and hundreds of you know, breaks myself without using it. Um, that being said, when I was a tech at Mercedes-Benz, we did do it on every single vehicle. So, uh, you know, to each their own, I guess, uh, whatever the manufacturer suggests. So. Uh, today I'm not going to be using it and uh, let's just get that bolted back up and we'll go from there. Okay, so we're ready to put those uh, caliper bolts back in. So I got it slid on here, uh, screwed these in by hand and we'll go ahead and we're going to torque these bolts down to 91 foot pounds. So get your torque wrench there and give those a pull and get those set up to 91. There we go, that's all torqued. And then next thing you do is we're going to hold it and put this back in. So uh, being that this is usually generally pretty stiff, it's hard to generally get back in place. So you just got to kind of wiggle it, get it all lined up and, uh, you know, look around the outside of it. Uh, if it doesn't seem to be going in and it will find its home, then uh, just get your clip, slide it on there, and then we can just tap it back into place exactly where it was and then we are basically ready to insert the pads. Uh, the pistons are still retracted from before and we're ready to insert our pads in here. Okay, so we're ready to install the pads. So, and that will bring us to another area of debate and that is whether to put anything on the brake pads or not. Um, you know, over the years I've kind of gone between the two, uh, put on, not put on, uh, different models, this and that. Um, these ones here are fairly like I said these are fairly fancy high-end pads apparently uh, they have a special backing normally I would apply something to the back of these I'm not going to um, I think I'm <clears throat> going to just apply 
uh, the coat uh, a little bit of uh, anti-seize to the end of the pads where it slips in just so it has a little bit of uh, you know so it doesn't really want to get stuck there um, so basically we're gonna just be using just uh, regular silver anti-seize and I'm just gonna apply um, you know just just a light coating along the ends where it uh, where it touches the caliper we want to make sure that we don't get this anywhere else we don't want to put it on to uh, get it onto the braking surface or you know onto the rotors or anything like that I mean of course if you do no big deal just wipe it off appropriately and uh, that shouldn't be a big deal so we got it on there and uh, we're gonna go ahead and slip those in another nice thing about these pads is they have a special bedding in compound and you can kind of see it's just on the outside there so um, well get all these pads going and we'll get them slipped into the caliper well I figured I'd show you the whole thing here may as well come this far let's go all the way so we got our uh, inner and outer pads so we'll go ahead and just uh, slip in the outer pad and we'll slip in the inner pad there as well make sure that's free you know it's not sticking uh, you know vertically uh, I'm sure there's uh, you know nothing wrong now but uh, you know sometimes there's you know like it, the debris we cleaned out and whatnot so that's nice and clean uh, the slide pin um, or the lock pin uh, I've already went ahead and uh, cleaned these up quite well uh, use a wire wheel wire brush will do just fine for you so we'll go ahead and uh, slip in the top one um, because they're clean they obviously go in nice and smooth um, these uh, so we replace this clip here like we saw in the package these can be a little bit of you know pain sometimes you kind of hook it in the hole there and then it sort of bends a little bit and then goes through so and then we can slide the one in there just to hold it in place we'll hook the top in and then press the bottom in and then we can go ahead and put those all the way through um, the package does come with these uh, you can see those uh, these pins here so uh, those would lock those in place I'm going to just stick with the factory one um, I like to use factory stuff whenever possible so it's still in good condition still nice and strong so we'll go ahead and reuse that so we'll just insert that in the top hook it back in the hole there and then for the bottom hole you just sort of find the spot where it needs to go and just sort of give it a little light little arc or bend if you want to call it just find its place and there it goes in and we can make sure that it's all intact and this is the same in place it's not touching or rubbing the rotor anywhere we can spin that and uh, yeah it's not uh, contacting anything there so essentially that is basically it um, we will go ahead and get the wheel back on and uh, we'll see you here for the end of the video Okay, so I went ahead and put the wheel on, got it torqued down. Uh, the all data repair manual did say 83 foot pounds is the torque spec. Um, I did find that to be a little bit light. Um, I guess, you know, a factory smaller wheel and tire, that would probably be okay. I do have a set of aftermarket wheels and tires on there, a little bit larger. Uh, I did go ahead and torque mine down to 100 foot pounds. Uh, of course, we went in a star sequence and got that all torqued down there. Um, and basically that's it. Um, I really hope someone found this video informative and you know hopefully help them out on their tacoma brakes um, if you have any questions you know about any of the work or anything else that uh, you'd like to ask uh, please feel free to ask it in the comments there um, if you have any suggestions for me i mean i would love to hear it um, you know pretty new to making videos as you can see i only got a couple up at this point in time um, you know i know what i'm doing with the vehicles but i definitely uh learning uh making videos so uh, please any comments uh any questions um, of course, you know, any suggestions uh, that, you know, things that I could do better, I would, you know, be love to hear that from you as well. Um, and of course, if you'd like to uh, ask about, uh, you know, any future videos, Tacoma or otherwise, uh, you know, we got a full shop here, uh, lots of cars coming through here all the time. Uh, you know, please feel free. Uh, I thank you very much if you made it through this whole video. I appreciate it very much. Uh, please consider subscribing. I do have a, uh, you know, trying to grow a, a, an audience, of course. Uh, please feel free. Uh, and I thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Goodbye.